this unit of oversight to which God has said, honor, honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long upon the land or in the land that I am going to give you. You've already heard so many times Happy Mother's Day, but you know that's what you're supposed to say when you first get up, I guess. And so, how about uh, how about looking around uh, there, perhaps in your home, or maybe here around you, and uh, you know, uh, find someone and tell them that uh, you know uh, I love mothers. Why not? Let's 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 just say that I love mothers. I love mothers. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys. <laughs> Are we having a good time or what? All right, today I'm going to be sharing the Word of God with you, uh, and it's going to apply to everyone here. About two weeks ago, I had the privilege of being in East Africa, teaching uh, a number of overseers of churches all across East, uh, all across each East Africa, from Uganda, Tanzania, Kenya, different places. And uh, through our church on the rock there, we're in our 40th year there, 39th or 40th year there. And uh, we have literally taken the gospel of Jesus Christ. We've um, uh, taken the gospel and we've seen so many souls saved, so many churches planted, orphanages, medical clinics, schools. Uh, and we have done this in country after country after country. But since COVID, um, our pastors had not been able to get together. And so these overseers, representing about 200 of our Church on the Rock churches throughout East Africa, came together in Nairobi, and I had the, uh, the privilege of sharing with them. And in teaching pastors, who will then go and teach other pastors, let me tell you what I told them. It's the same thing I teach in almost every pastor's conference, and it's the same thing I try to remember when I get in this pulpit. In fact, just yesterday, I was with... A, a, a large number of pastors in Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, I drove home last night from Montgomery uh, because one of my pastor friends, Eddie Mitchell, he passed away last Sunday while I was preaching in Montgomery. We had his funeral yesterday. And so I had an opportunity to, to drive up there for his funeral and to spend time with people that I have known you know, and met for the last 40 years. Of, of, of more than 40 years of ministry. And uh, a man got up to speak at his funeral. There were a, n a number of them. And um, I, I, I didn't remember this particular man. His name is uh, Jim Stocksdale. Uh, I know I had met him probably in some, you know, former life years ago. And whenever he got up in his notes, I thought it was very interesting because people didn't know I was going to be there. And he said... He said, Pastor Ron Hammonds once said, and I thought, man, I, I'm like a needle in a haystack out there, you know, and uh, people, you know, don't know. Pastor Ron Hammonds once said, show me your sons that I may know you. And if you have no sons, I know you. Wow. It was a message to pastors. I was preaching at some pastor's conference, no doubt. And it was a message to pastors about the importance of discipleship. The importance of raising up sons and daughters so that we aren't just enjoying hearing ourselves preach. And so I, I, I say this all over the place. And I thought, well, you know, I'm all, all of a sudden the light shined on me and a bunch of people turned around and looked at me. And, you know, I'm going, oh, uh, <laughs> I'm getting quoted here by somebody I don't really know, uh, but he said something I'm going to use in one of my next sermons. So I called him afterwards, and I said, hey, listen, let's trade out. You can have that one if I can have the one that you just preached. Um, but what I told the pastors in, in, in East Africa 
and what I tell myself before I come to the platform and what I told a number of pastors this week while I was there at the funeral. Uh, 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 I told them this, it, it matters very little what we say. This morning, it's not going to matter to you as far as you're concerned. It's not really going to matter what I say. You know, I'm, this is going to be in my opening statement this Friday night. I'm, 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 uh, I'm speaking at the Orange Community Church School's uh, graduation this coming Friday night. And that will be one of my opening statements. As far as you're concerned, graduating students, as far as you're concerned, congregation, as far as you're concerned, church online, it matters very little what I say today. It only matters what you will take home with you. Amen. There is such a difference between telling and teaching. There's as much a difference between telling and teaching as there is between listening and learning. Oh, you might do the courtesy today of listening to me. And I might fill up the next 20 minutes with telling you something. But if all I do is tell and all you do is listen, today won't make a difference. Not the difference it could make. As I told these pastors in East Africa a couple of weeks ago, told them we have got to focus more on teaching and less on telling. It's not about how many words I say. It's about how much can you remember? How much can I put in such a way that you would accept it, receive it, think about it? Because I have not taught. I have not taught you anything until you can repeat what I have said. That's the way I know. That's what I talked to myself about before I got up this morning. Okay. I said to myself, you know, you know you love to hear yourself talk. You know, you know it's Mother's Day. You know, don't, don't excite these people. Don't, don't try to hype them up. Don't try to give them some emotional experience. But teach them something. And you haven't taught them until they can say what you have said. The way you know, as I told these pastors, the way you know you have actually taught someone is when they can teach someone else. That's what 2 Timothy says. We commit the truths that we hold to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Discipleship. A very important thing. So today, I'm going to ask you one more time. You know what I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you today to, to do your part. I'm going to try my best to do my part. I'm going to ask you to do your part. I'm going to ask you to get at least one thing today for yourself. And then I'm going to ask you, if you can, if you can handle two things, get one other thing that you can give to somebody else this week. It may be the same thing. But I'm only going to be of value to you if I can teach you something. And it's only going to make a difference to you if you can learn something. So let's decide that for the next few minutes, I'm going to do more than tell. And you're going to do more than listen. And together, we're going to watch what God, his hope is in our life. Watch what God has always wanted to do. He's always wanted us to understand him so that we could become more like him. Okay. So with that being said, let me encourage you to open up your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6. Now, I realize that not everyone here is a mother. Okay? And it's Mother's Day, and we're going to be um, you know, centering this truth around motherhood. But it can apply, as truth does, to, to anything that you want to apply it to in life. And uh, I, I know not everyone here is a mother, but everyone here is here because of a mother. Can we all agree on that? Amen. Okay. You are here because of a mother. That's the way we all are. One of the prerequisites that God designed for life is that you had a mother. Uh, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, 
in our varied experiences, she may not have hung around long. She may not have been a, you know, the, the, the model mother. Or, uh, you, know, or you, you may even have never known her as far as a biological mother. But God has designed by his perfect will that no one gets here without a mother. And evidently, therefore, mothers are, are a very important prerequisite to life. And also, they are meant to follow us through life. Whether, uh, you know, a, 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 a biological mother, a foster mother, an adoptive mother, you know, a spiritual mother, some mother figure in our life, they are important from God's perspective. Mothers are amazing. Uh, however, at some point, which we've already heard today, and no one knew what was in my notes, uh, uh, you know, no one, uh, uh, but, uh, but uh, you have heard it already, that at times mothers feel lost alone at sometimes mothers feel inadequate at some point in life every mother and 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 every god intended mother whether it's biological adoptive whether it's a spiritual mother or a mother figure or, or, or a foster mother you will feel a sense of inadequacy I'm not sure what I'm doing. I'm not sure if I can do this you know it it, it was felt that way you know uh, because of disappointments at times not every hope, not every hardworking, heartfelt desire of a mother ends up being the story of their child, ends up being the result of, of, uh, you know, the, of, of, of all their hopes. They just don't always turn out. Eve, the mother of all living, she had disappointments. You know, uh, one of her children killed another one. Joshebed, the the mother of Moses, such disappointment. She had to give her child up for adoption. She fought against the genocide that was going on in her day. When the devil wanted to commit cultural genocide, he went to abortion. And the horrors that mothers face today, many of them forced by economic or by false academic information, a bad education, being told all of their life that this is an option, this is a viable, reasonable option. The horrors that I have sit and listened to from those who took that option later in life only to realize that they had been told something that was not true. I believe the will of the devil has always been to commit genocide through, abort through, through, through abortion. In fact, I don't want to wax political, but let me wax truthful. We are experiencing, have experienced since 1973, an attempt of the devil to commit cultural genocide in our nation. Black women represent 7% of the population of our nation. They represent 40% of the abortions of our nation. And any time you see 7% representing 40%, somewhere behind there is a dastardly demonic desire to commit cultural genocide. It is that plain. And it's unfortunate that our education system was controlled by those who had an evil desire just as much as was in the days of Moses. This is not the will of God. And yet we've raised a generation that has been absolutely educated to believe that this is a common and a good thing. It is not. It has not been and it should not continue. I had that, did not have that in my notes, but it is in my heart. May God help us. Even Mary, the mother of Jesus, encountered a lot of disappointments. Sometimes she wondered, 
how she was going to make it. How is this going to happen? You know, where is my child? Her, her child stayed behind 12 years old. She lost her child. Don't you know she wondered if I'm a good mother? She found her child and, 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 and corrected her child. That's what mothers do. And the Bible says that Jesus went back home and submitted himself to her and to Joseph. She had other disappointments. One of the greatest is that she had to see him falsely accused and you know, uh, horribly sentenced, wrongfully uh, uh, you know, beaten and cruelly tortured and executed. Mothers carry a load and shoulder responsibilities and encounter disappointments from a different perspective than anyone else in life. Now, not all mothers do, their, you know, do the greatest job, but, and some even ab abandon their greatest opportunities, and, and some are robbed of their hope and their heart. Nonetheless, mothers are still the most amazing creatures that God has ever given on planet Earth. When we talk about mothers this morning, again, we'll be referring to all types and kinds of mothers. So it's my goal to teach you something today and not just tell you something. I haven't got to the teaching part yet. When I get to the teaching part, you'll know you know every week because I say it over and over and over. I keep it simple, I say it often, and I make it burn. Hoping that you will leave here and be able to repeat it like uh, Pastor Jim Stocksdale was able to repeat something I said I don't know how many years ago. And I wrote down something he taught me in my notes that I can remember because he taught me something. Uh, more than just telling me something. I appreciate that. Have you found Ephesians chapter 6? We're going to read verses 2 and 3. They're familiar, but... Today we're going to look at these uh, perhaps in just a, a little different perspective. Verse 2, honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. Wow. You know, that's the first commandment with promise. Isn't that interesting? The first commandment with promise. You know, it's, it's, it's a part of the ten biggies. Those ten big commandments, you know, uh, we, we find them in Exodus chapter 20. Specifically in verse 12, the Bible says, Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Interesting to note here that this first commandment, which is the fifth commandment on the ten commandments, but it's the very first commandment with promise. It has a promise attached to it. Isn't that interesting that God would say, do this, do this, do this, do this. No, by the way, if you do this number five, then you are going to get something for it. It's going to end up benefiting you. You know, the first, uh, the, the, the first commandments, indeed all the commandments do benefit us and benefit others, but the first four uh, deal with how we treat God and the last five about how we treat one another. And that one in the middle, that pinnacle commandment, switching from how we feel about God to how we feel about others, here is mom and dad. This, uh, this, this unit that God intended for the family to have. This unit of oversight to which God has said, Honor, honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long upon the land or in the land that I am going to give you. I find that to be interesting. Okay, uh, uh, You know, this is not a commandment. It's not, the, the, you know, it is, uh, excuse me, it is not a suggestion. It is a command. It's instructions. And, and, and these commands, uh, if we would look at them better, um, a, a little different than God just saying, you do this or I'm sending you to hell. You know, that's, that's not what is intended by these commandments. It's not what the Holy Spirit intended in Ephesians, the sixth chapter. He's not dangling us over the fires of hell if we break one of these commandments. He is giving us instructions for a healthy and a happy life. For a productive life. He's given his instructions on how, uh, how we can move ourselves into a place of partnership with him so that his power can be released and his will and his desire can be released in our lives. God is all for us. It's the first commandment to which a promise has been attached. Now this is a truth that I would like to share with you today. 
every time you find a promise from God, you will find a potential release of his power to make that promise come to pass. Let me say that again. Every time that you find a promise from God, you will find a potential release of his power to make that promise come to pass. Specifically, if we were to look into this particular promise, this is a promise that you will live long in the land that he's going to give you. Now, it's not a promise that you're going to live 120 or 150 or 200 years. It's not a promise you're going to live a long time. This is not connected to you having a long life, by the way. I know that that has been you know, preached and taught and understood, but it's a promise that the land that you're going to go to, you get to stay in it for a long time. And this is a generational promise. It's not an individual promise. It's a generational promise that you're going to go to a land and I'm going to give you a land. I'm going to give you something and when I give it to you, it will be yours, not just yours, but yours for a long time for generations to come. If you will honor your mother and your father, then generations to come will be able to stay Stand on the ground that you take from the devil. If there's peace and joy and love, it will pass on from generation to generation to generation. He didn't mean that you'll, you'll, you'll stay in your land for 20 years, 50 years, 100 years, and you'll live a long time. It means that the land will be yours. It will be your, 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 your children and your children's children, and it will continue for generations to come. You will live you know, long in the land. And when God says long, he means long. He doesn't mean, he's not talking about years. He's talking about generations. Now you can take it as a word from God personally, but it's meant to impact your children and your children's children. When you find a promise from God, every time you find a promise from God, you will find a potential release of God's power to make that promise come to pass. Now, I don't want to be like King Hezekiah, who God said, you know, you're going to die. He said, oh, give me 15 more years, God. Give me more time. God gave him 15 more years. Those were the worst 15 years of his life, by the way. And he said, listen, you know, in a time, you know, your children are going to go into captivity and bad things are going to happen to them. And, 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 and he said, well, wait a second. Is that going to happen in my lifetime? No, it's going to happen in your children's lifetime. He said, oh, okay, no worries. I'm good with that. Long as I'm not going to have to endure problems. And many times people imagine that a promise from God is so individual that, it, that, 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 that God is promising something's going to come and set down on your life. And we, we, don't, we, we, we don't catch the reality that God is wanting to bless not only us, but our children and our children's children. I mean, to the third, the fourth, the tenth, to a thousand generations. And what erodes the next generation is when we don't take the ground, preserve the ground, and when we don't reach the potential of releasing the power of God. Let me say this one more time. Every time you find a promise of God, okay, every time there's a promise from God, you will find a potential release of God's power to make the promise come to pass. Promises of God, uh, the, all the promises of God, the promise of salvation is nothing if you don't take advantage of it. It means nothing for you. Every promise means nothing to you if you don't do what God said. Promises are conditional. If you do not accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the promise of salvation, forgiveness of sins, does not apply. But when you find a promise of God that he'll forgive you and he'll save your soul, you need to look where is the potential release of that power? Well, if I confess my sins, he's faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. 
The implication is, if I don't, then I haven't accessed that. If I don't ask Jesus to be my Lord and Savior, I haven't accessed this. Because you can hear the Word of God and not mix it with faith, and it will not bother you. It, does not, it, it, it did not make a difference, the Bible says, in the people that heard it, because they did not mix it with faith. They didn't do anything about it. They did not qualify themselves to be a recipient of what God had promised. Is this, is, is this plain? Now, let me tell you, our nation is in need, not just in our generation, but our nation's need for future generations. We all want our children and our children's children. We all want our great-grandchildren and great-great-grandchildren to have a wonderful nation, a wonderful world, a wonderful heritage, a wonderful inheritance. And it can begin with us today because there is a power that God is willing to release to make his promise come to pass. What is the promise? That you can live long, that your enemies won't be running you out of the land. Your enemies won't be running your children and your children's children, that they won't take over the promise. They won't take over the inheritance, that, 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 that the ground that you gain, that, 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 that the, the hope that God is giving you would actually last for generations to come. God's hope is that we would qualify ourselves to release this power so that this promise comes to pass. I, mean, I, 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 I want my children to live in peace. And I have an opportunity to access the power of God to release that that, that, that promise in my life and in my children's life. I was at a funeral yesterday where there were five generations of people that were standing up for the Lord and testifying for him. I thought, my goodness, man, you know, somebody did their job. Eddie Mitchell was 74 years old. I walked around and found one that did their job. I shook hands with his 92-year-old daddy, who is a Church of God preacher, who loves the Lord and raised his children right. And it happened. It's happening to, to happen to Eddie and, and, and his sons and his grandsons and his great-grandchildren were there. All serving the Lord, all loving Jesus, all happy in the Lord. Why? Well, I don't know exactly where it started, but I can look all the way back to that 92-year-old man and tell you that that man stood his ground and ain't nobody moved his family off Jesus. Not that bad things hadn't happened, but nobody's been able to take that ground. Nobody's been able to come in and rob and steal and destroy their foundation in Christ because the power of God is evident. I was in Kenya just again two weeks ago, and there's a, you know, I've, I've got a picture of me standing there with five generations. I went to see my 70 something year old friend, Reverend Dr. Musa Jaguna, and then me and him got in the car along with his kids and grandkids. And we went down the road to see his mama, 94 years old. Well, I, I, you know, she's sitting there weaving baskets for her family. She raised him in a graveyard. The woman worked all day long with eight kids. That, that, that's her. I didn't know you had a picture of her. I was right there somewhere. She raised them in a graveyard, eight kids without a daddy. The dad decided he'd leave. A preacher came from South Africa, a missionary, and led her to the Lord. She accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. She worked all day long for one potato that she came home and divided that potato up and fed her kids every day. I've known her for 40 years now. I've got other pictures of me with her when she was a lot younger. I know what her commitment to Jesus and what her life and what her teaching her children to do made a difference. I stood there with four or five generations of her family, and we had this wonderful generational picture. Amazing. I'm going to tell you when you decide 
that you're going to do something that is not just for you. It will bless you, but it's not just for you. It is for the generations to come. You can release the power of God. You can. You know, mothers, mothers are a gift from God. Motherhood is a calling. You've already heard this this morning. It's, 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 it's innate. It's a God job. It's not just a human endeavor. Uh, motherhood is a mantle. It's a mantle. It's not just a person. It's a mantle. It's a mantle which can be passed. If it was a person, it couldn't be passed. A mantle like, let me, let me liken it unto Elijah and Elisha. Elijah's gone Elisha stood up because he had the mantle. The man died, but the mantle passed. Okay. There's a difference between a person and the anointing and the mantle that they carry and the mission that God has given them. It can be passed. As, as, as the Word of God shows us that, uh, you know, uh, that uh, you know, Jesus, that's the reason he could give us the ministry. Because it was a mantle, it was not a man. You know, that's the reason that uh, that uh, the Apostle Paul could give it to Timothy. That's the reason Moses could give it to to, to Joshua. You know, that, that that that's the reason why you know uh, uh, you can give it to your children. It's a mantle. That's the reason you can pass it to your grandchildren, because it's not just a man. It's more than just a man. It's more than just a mission. It's more than just a mother. It is a mantle. Motherhood is a mantle. It's a calling from God. It's a gift of God. It's a mission from heaven. It is, it, it's, 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 it's more than just you know, a something that you do. And, and, and listen, it's, it's so important to God that even if you did not have a mother that was all that you had hoped, or even if you are not a mother that God desired, that God will bless your children with an opportunity anyway because it's a mission that he has to have done and it's a mantle on the inside of them that can be accessed. Every generation has a chance to be the first generation to claim ground for Jesus. I'm just hoping that my generation has claimed some ground and the next generation can stand on it because of the promise of God. You see, every time you find a promise of God, you will find a potential release for his power to make the promise come to pass. I personally believe that God, that's the first promise that he attached to any of his instructions. He said, do this, do this, do this, do this. And then he said, do this and I will make sure you're not moved out of the land. I will make sure it affects not only you, but generations to come. It's a promise. Uh, the Apostle Paul says it's the first commandment with promise. But every time you find a promise, you will find a potential release of his power. What is the release? Born? What is the button that you push to release the power to bless your children? Honoring your mother's. Now, I didn't make this up, and I am not trying to, to you know, somehow psychologically, you know, uh, suggest something to you that's not true. This is foundational truth. It's a part of the Ten Commandments. It is very important to God because when we honor our mothers, that's half the equation. But when we honor our mothers, and I'm not just talking about biological mothers. I'm talking about adoptive mothers, mother figures, foster mothers. I'm talking about spiritual mothers. You see, God in his design has put you in somebody's heart. He first put you in someone's womb. Okay? But he's also put you in someone's heart. And moms, dads as well, but it's not Father's Day. Moms, he has put someone in your heart. Just as much as he did with Deborah. 
He put Israel in her heart. And she became a mother of Israel. And before that, they were losing land. They were losing ground. They weren't winning the battles. They were about to be kicked out of the land. Their land was going to be overrun with enemies until Deborah arose as a mother in Israel. Somebody today is losing ground. Somebody today does not know what to do about their marriage. They don't know what to do about their job. They don't know what to do about their education. Somebody today in your world does not have the answer. And they need a loving, caring, counseling word. But listen. You are in somebody's heart. God bless those of you that have on sight, on scene, still touchable, you know, moms. Biological, adoptive, foster moms that you can, you know, honor and respect. But just because your mom may have already gone on to her eternal reward does not alleviate you of the command to honor those who God has given you into their heart and has given us to provide that loving, caring counsel. This morning as I close, I guess let me wonder what perhaps I've taught. You've been wonderful in listening, but what have we learned? I ask you to take one thing for yourself today. If I could reiterate something, I would tell you that if you could take this truth that every time you find a promise of God there's something attached to it that you need to do in order to release that power to make the promise come to pass the promise is not not going to come to pass in your life if you don't do what the requirement is to make that promise happen this morning the promise of forgiveness is not just you know just this blanket that's thrown over you every time you sin if you Confess your sins. He's faithful and just to forgive your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. We need to come before the Lord humbly and ask him to forgive us of our sins. And it's not that the, you know, the sin you commit after you're born again is not going to send you to hell. That's not the point. But it will exempt you from the blessings of God that he has for you in this life. It will rob you of peace. It will rob you from joy. And, and, and that's what sin does. Sin separates us. And sin can separate you from people and separate you from blessings. Uh, you know, it, it can't separate you from eternity once you're born again. But yet, if you want to live in the peace and the joy of Jesus Christ, you need to find yourself humbly asking him to forgive you. That's where the release of the power is. Okay? Every promise has a point of release of the power. For the generations to come, for our world, we need to make sure that we are paying proper respect and listening to the caring, loving guidance of someone that God has given to mother us. Instead of just being aggravated, irritated, they're butting in your business. Maybe you don't know who that person is. Maybe you should pray. God help us when we're without mothers. God help Israel. That's the whole thing about Judges, the fifth chapter. God help. Help a nation that does not have mothers. It rises up and, and, and cares about a nation. Carries that nation in their heart. Carries that, that, that concern in their heart. Today, you can embrace the opportunity to find and to honor and respect those that you know God has given you. I've asked you to find something to take to somebody else. I'm not sure what truth you're going to take away to give to somebody. But honor your fathers and your mothers so that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Okay? He's giving us opportunity. Let's access that power and let's stand our ground. For those of you watching online, Again, you will find a connect card at cotr.com. I want to encourage you, please do send us your prayer request. You know, connect with us. Connection makes a difference. Relationship makes a difference. Life is all about relationship. The only thing that God will have left from all that he's done on planet Earth is going to be family. That's all he'll have left.
And he's asked us to do one thing toward our parents, toward those that he's given us. Just as much as he placed you in someone's womb, he has placed you in someone's heart. Okay, uh, Honor those who speak into your life. Honor them. Okay? Respect them and thank them. Yeah. God bless you, Church Online. If you have anything, make sure you let us know, okay? And if not, go in peace, don't go in peace. As God has a plan for your life. And don't forget, happy Mother's Day. This program is brought to you through the faithful support of the members and partners of Golden Triangle Church on the Rock. For more information about our church or to find other programming and additional resources, check out our website at www.cotr.com. Join us here next time. And until then, we pray God blesses you to make a living, make a life, and make a difference.